to understand how its own history is embedded in the histories of those places that it deems other. So there is no European history that isn't already a global history, given the extent of European conquest and invasion around most of the world's territories. I was reading something the other day that apparently only four or five countries in the world have never been colonized by, by a European country. And so when you have that extent of, of, of conquest, how can that not have an impact in the configuration of the present? So we talked about refugees earlier, but one of the other things that often gets talked about is migrants. And yet, you know, and there's a distinction made between refugees and migrants, which I don't think is helpful, but it's made. But the issue is that the majority of people who are deemed to be migrants are not migrants. They're simply former subjects of empire. And given that, you know, if, if you're traveling within a country, say from York to London, you're not straightforwardly understood as a migrant. So why, if you were traveling from Delhi or Nairobi to, to London, would you be seen as a migrant? given that the polity within which, you were, within which you were traveling was the same polity. But there's a tendency now to forget that history and now understand those who come as somehow that it's inappropriate that they do so, despite the fact that for the last 500 years, Europeans traveled the world and went wherever they wished and actually set up institutions and states and other places where, where without the agreement of the populations over whom they were establishing these territories. So in a sense, I think what Europe really needs to learn is its own history in terms of that history of conquest, and then to reflect upon that history, to think about what would be needed in the present to make good on the injuries of the past. And in part, what would be needed is reparations. And that, I think, is the key question that Europe has to grapple with.